Coffee Time is now two minutes after the hour. My name is Derek Shields. I'm the director of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. And I'd like to welcome you all to the induction ceremony for the class of 2019 of the Susan M. Daniels Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Uh, this year, it's being held um, in January during National Mentoring Month, and importantly today on International Mentoring Day, uh, which happens to fall on January 17th for a reason. It's Muhammad Ali's birthday. Um, Muhammad Ali secured a legacy of advancing diversity and inclusion, um, his strategic advocacy for a better world, and how we engage people globally through both informal and formal mentoring. In the words of Muhammad Ali's wife, Lani Ali, mentors are special gifts to the world. They encourage, motivate, reinforce, and guide others to reach their own individual greatness. After all, mentors have the power to transform lives. Speaking of mentors, today, like uh, all of our previous induction ceremonies, we stop to honor a great disability rights leader and a great leader and mentor. Susan Daniels. This event honors one of the disability com community's most admired leaders whose passion was to connect young people with disabilities to meaningful careers through mentorship. And she purpose, purposely attacked this area, not just to get jobs, but to get careers. The inaugural Hall of Fame was inducted in the class of 2015 in honor of the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. We inducted 25 leaders and mentors. Annual public nominations have been held since, and to date we've had 85 individuals and 13 organizations uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. On a personal note, Susan was my mentor and was a friend, colleague, and mentor to many of those that are with us today on this webinar. She is missed, yet her spirit is certainly with us and lives on in all of us in the work we do and the mentoring we center in our lives. Found here, so I'm... I apologize, I have a real person to you guys. Who was it? Susan M. Daniels, that's, that's the Sir, I can hear you, Katherine, out at the University of Kansas. If you could mute your mic, please. Thank you. So now, moving forward, I'd like to quote Susan as we begin. We have to change the way we think, accommodating human beings, giving them the tools and the environments they need to be successful are all part of making a society that encourages and supports equity and inclusion. Providing education for all citizens is costly, but a great investment. Providing a society free from stigma, architecturally and socially and economically requires a great investment but it is worth it. Susan Daniels, June 1997, from a final report from the International Leadership Forum for Women with Disabilities. Some of you were involved with that work, I know. Okay, with Susan's spirit on board, I'd like to turn now to the agenda for the induction ceremony itself. Again, I'm Derek Shields. I'm the director of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition, which I Work, run and operate under uh, Partners for Youth with Disabilities out of Boston. Um, what we're gonna do today is first, we're gonna hear from Daniel Hodges. Uh, Daniel is gonna offer welcoming remarks and he's gonna induct our first class of 2019 mentor, uh, which is actually his mentor. Uh, next after that, I'll be back on and I'll cover the next 10 individuals, reading citations for each one. Um, then we'll turn to John Kemp, who, if you're watching through video, has joined us. Welcome, John. Um, John will honor a member of the Hall of Fame who passed away in November, Barbara Butts. After that, Janelle Thomas, who uh, cooperates the, the mentoring programs with me uh, from PYD, will read the citations for our second segment, 11 individuals. After that, Janelle will introduce Judy Human, who's also on video now, and Judy will honor another mentoring Hall of Fame member that passed away this year, Marka Bristow. After Judy honors Marka, we'll return and I'll induct the final group of inductees. Uh, and then our last inductee is Maria Palacios, who's with us today. And um, she has written a poem that she'll 
um, introduce and then read for us uh, as a special way to conclude today's ceremony. Uh, and then we'll tell you a little bit about the Mentoring Coalition. And with all that, we'll wrap up at 90 minutes after start. So that's today's game plan. And with that, it's my pleasure to now introduce to you Daniel Hodges. Daniel is a second year law student at the University of Baltimore and a nominator of one of our inductees for the class of 2019. Daniel, go ahead. Thank you, Derek. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to this year's induction ceremony. As Derek mentioned, when people with disabilities are mentored, it not only benefits us, but it benefits the general public. This is highlighted by the fact that my mentor, Elisa Key, came into the mentoring space with, as she put it, not much understanding or knowledge of the disability sphere or something to that effect. And over the last three years, in partnership together, not only has her knowledge increased, but we have seen a symbiotic relationship where our confidence has both built, our knowledge levels have both built over our collaborative work and as she has taken her mentorship talent um, more broadly. Alisa is a member of Pearson Education's global intellectual property team working on trademarks and domain names and such things that honestly, even as a second year law student, give me a headache, um, but more power to her. She also now leads Pearson legal department mentoring efforts in collaboration with the National Federation of the Blind, the Ellen Sachs Institute out of University of Southern California and others. But three years ago, it wasn't quite like this. He was coming in wanting to learn and wanting to help, and I was in a situation where I was drifting. I had thought about a legal career for all of about 30 seconds and decided I just wasn't up to it, but I knew I wanted to advocate. And so, Alisa very gently started with goals. Can you get to the National Federation of the Blind Convention this July? I think you can. Can you improve your LinkedIn presence? I think you can. Can you do an assortment of other things? I think you can. And then several months later, when she said, it's time for you to actually consider going to law school, I think you can. I trusted her enough to believe her despite my doubts. And when I took the LSAT and got accepted into her alma mater, she was there celebrating. She was there touring the school with me. And she was here in Baltimore a couple of days after I made it to Maryland saying, let's go. And so now, as I have begun my career as a law student, as I've begun building my own nonprofit, as I've just yesterday accepted a position on the Student Bar Association's Diversity Council for my school, I hear her encouragement. I hear what she has taught me about setting aside my own fears and expectations. And I see her expanding her own knowledge, leading other programs, and teaching now generations of mentors to do the same. For these reasons, and her true care, in bringing equity and inclusion to the legal space, it is my honor to induct the Lisa Key to the Susan Daniel Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Daniel, thank you so much for kicking us off today with these uh, great remarks showing the impact in, of the, uh, your relationship. Uh, importantly, what was a, about a a six month mentoring program seems like it's also become a lifelong friendship and relationship. So congratulations to Elisa and to Daniel on the accomplishments that you have uh, together. And with that, uh, we will continue with our next inductions. Um, Joshua Basile is a 34 year old advocate, philanthropist, lawyer, and quadriplegic. At the age of 19, Josh's determination to help others motivated him to form the nonprofit Determined to Heal, which mentors families through its Living with Adventurous Wheels program. 
In 2007, Joshua went on to create what is now the world's largest paralysis video mentoring network with over 14,000 paralysis-related videos, spinalpedia.com. Joshua is currently a trial attorney and is trying to help working Marylanders with significant disabilities maintain nursing services while employed. On mentoring, Joshua said, learning from others that speak your very own disability language, for me, I call it speaking spinal cord, empowers both the mind and body to believe that if someone else can do it, so can I. Please welcome Joshua into the Susan Daniels Mentoring Hall of Fame. Leroy F. Moore Jr. is the founder of Crip Pop Nation, a columnist for Illin and Chillin for Poor Magazine, a founding member of the National Black Disability Mentoring, or excuse me, National Black Disability Coalition, an activist around police brutality against people with disabilities. Leroy also started or helped start organizations like Disability Advocates of Minorities Organization and Sins Invalid. His cultural work includes film documentaries, spoken word CDs, poetry books, and children's books, including Black Disabled Art History 101. From Harvard to the Whitney Museum, to media engagement for disability in Johannesburg, South Africa, Leroy Moore has more than 20 years of activism, journalism, writing, and lecturing on race and disability. On mentoring, Leroy lists education, leadership, passing down knowledge, opening up opportunities, and cross-learning as keys to mentorship. Black disabled poet, activist, and author, please welcome Leroy F. Moore Jr. into the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Next, Darren Burton retired in June 2018 after a 25-year career working to further the independence and capabilities of people with disabilities a career focused mainly on improving the accessibility of modern technology. Darren worked for the West Virginia Assistive Technology System housed at West Virginia University, taught an assistive technology class for Vision Itinerant Teachers Program, served as the director of the AFB Tech at the American Foundation for the Blind, and ended his career as an accessibility specialist at Yahoo. His retirement life is focused on taking care of family and mentoring young people with disabilities, and he still does some consulting work with Silicon Valley companies. On mentoring, Darren said, mentoring has been a huge part of my career, both as a mentor and a mentee. I cannot say enough about the people who mentored me. When I retired, a long line of non-disabled colleagues thanked me, and it was very emotional to realize that I had inadvertently mentored them too. Several told me that not only did they learn how to build products that were accessible to people with disabilities, but they learned to live a more purposeful and dignified life. Please welcome Darren Burton into the Hall of Fame. Dr. Catherine Campisi devoted her 30-year career to increasing opportunities in higher education and employment for persons with disabilities and other disadvantaged persons. She served as the director of the California Department of Rehabilitation, the coordinator of Disabled Student Service and Dean of Student Services in the California Community Colleges System. She is also an active member of the disability rights movement and served as chairperson of the board of directors for a large independent living center and as legislative chairperson and president of the International Professional Organization of Disabled Student Services staff. I believe now called the Association on Higher Education and Disability, or AHEAD. Deeply committed to mentoring young people with disabilities, Catherine has been active in administering the California Youth Leadership Forum for years and enjoys both working on disability specific issues as well as serving as a bridge to other groups to articulate the disability perspective and to accomplish shared work to advance opportunities of and better understanding for, pers for all persons. From Dr. Campisi herself, mentoring young people with disabilities is one of my most meaningful life activities. I learn so much from young people about their lives, hopes, and struggles. I am deeply committed to growing future leaders in the disability rights movement who understand intersectionality and are committed to advancing positive social change. I suffer from not having an adult role model with a disability and hope my support can help people achieve their life goals and feel proud to be identified as a person with a disability. 
please welcome Dr. Campisi to the Hall of Fame. Pascuala Herrera is a professor and accessibility specialist at Harper College. As a Latina disabled woman, she prides herself in leading by example and inspires and motivates students in working towards achieving their aspirations. Born in Mexico, Pascuala immigrated to the United States at the age of seven. Pascuala started her career at Harper College in 1991, and her role as an assistive, excuse me, accessibility specialist in access and disability services. She provides and plans services for students with disabilities and has assisted thousands of students by conducting intake interviews, determining legal accommodations, and providing academic advising and counseling. Pasquala also instructs students in the classroom by teaching first year experience in humanistic psychology. As a Latina disabled woman, she inspires and motivates students in working towards achieving their aspirations. From Gabriela, her former student, uh, Pasquala Herrera has made a great difference in my life. She has always been there to support me with anything, and she has been an amazing role model that I admire dearly. There are actually no words that, cannot ex that can express how I really feel for everything that Pasquela has done for me. Please welcome Pasqu Pasquela Herrera to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Next, Deborah Rue is a global disability inclusion strategist, market influencer, published author, successful entrepreneur, and an exceptional mother. In leading Rue Global Impact, Deborah consults with corporations and the United Nations and inspires and advocates for governments and corporations to include people with disabilities. Deborah received her call to action when she was told by so-called experts that her daughter, Sarah, who was born with Down syndrome, would never walk or talk. She refused to accept the prognosis and perception of this condition. Driven by her faith in the power of the human potential and the love for her daughter, Deborah was determined to dedicate her life to create a path to empowerment and the success for all those with disabilities. With over 350,000 followers across all social mediums, Deborah is host of Human Potential at Work and co-founder of the award-winning Access Chat, one of the world's largest tweet chats with over 8 billion tweets. In her advocacy work, she also passionately adds mentoring in all she does. She desires to help every person with a disability succeed. One person wrote that Deborah has provided persons with disabilities, in particularly women with disabilities, with mentoring that motivates individuals to not surrender their dreams. Please welcome Deborah Rood to the Hall of Fame. Brother Christopher Stephen Jenks, BSG, grew up in Manhattan, where his father served as a pastor of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. The rectory served as his learning ground as it housed many of the church's outreach programs, including a drop-in center for homeless folks and a food pantry and clothing bank. While in college, Brother Christopher became addicted to drugs and later received a diagnosis for his depressive disorder. Brother Christopher was admitted to the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, a religious community for men in the Episcopal Church. In 1995, he then joined the staff of Fessenden House in Yonkers, New York. Brother Christopher was appointed executive director of the Fessenden House, what became the only recovery-oriented housing with an open-stay policy, expecting men with serious mental and or mental health issues. Importantly, the staff lived with the men. Their home was our home, it was said, and our home was theirs. The purpose of the house was not to treat the men. Festiden House gave them a safe place to live, physically and emotionally. Brother Christopher is now retired and living in Providence, Rhode Island, where he does volunteer work for the Episcopal Diocese of Rhode Island. On mentoring, Brother Christopher said, mentoring is always mutual. It is not and cannot be a one-sided proposition. I firmly believe that I received far more from the men at Festiden House than I gave them. I am called brother for a reason. I'm not here to push or pull anybody toward a destination. I am here to accompany them on our mutual journey together. Please welcome Brother Christopher to the Hall of Fame. Allegra Heath Stout is the fellowship director and trainer at the Jewish Organizing Institute and Network for Justice. In this role, 
Allegra trains and coaches Jewish young adults through the Jewish Organizing Fellowship, a year-long community organizing training program. Allegra spearheaded the Empower Fellowship, an initiative dedicated to supporting disabled Jewish organizers and training local justice organization on all joint fellows and to work against ableism. Through the Empower Fellowship, Allegra mentors young adults with disabilities as they find jobs as community organizers, explore the intersections of disability, Judaism, and justice work, and deepen their skills as social justice leaders. Prior to join, Allegra organized low-income people with disabilities at the Boston Center for Independent Living, started, starting with her own Jewish organizing fellowship year. Allegra also writes on disability identity and student activism, serves on the board of Disability Policy Consortium, and trains autistic college student leaders at the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network's Autism Campus Inclusion Leadership Academy. On mentoring, Allegra said, Disabled people are often isolated, and many of us have been taught to doubt our own capabilities and worth. Mentoring is a crucial way to counter this isolation and self-doubt, while helping one another forge our own paths, which in turn open up new possibilities for other. Through mentoring, we support each we support individuals' growth as a way of strengthening our communities. Please welcome Allegra He Stout to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Mark Crenshaw is the Director of Interdisciplinary Training at the Center for Leadership in Disability, a university center for excellence in developmental disabilities in Georgia. Mark has a passion for training emerging leaders with and without disabilities to work collaboratively to build more responsive systems in a more just world. In his work as Georgia Leadership Education and Neurodevelopmental and Related Disabilities Training Director, Mark has had the great fortune to help more than 170 students and fellows as leaders in health and healthcare, education, public policy, advocacy, and many other arenas. Mark also participates on the core faculty of the Association of University Centers on Disability Leadership Academy. The purpose of this academy is to encourage emerging leaders with and without disabilities to clarify their commitment to justice for and with people with disabilities. This includes Liz Weintraub, class of 2018, who nominated Mark for this award. The common theme across all of Mark's teaching and mentoring has been centering the narratives of leaders with disabilities to help learners with and without disabilities understand what is possible when they collaborate to build more accessible and inclusive organizations. On mentoring, Mark said, I wanna to work toward a vision of the world where people with disabilities are seen as wise and capable leaders. One of the things that must happen for this vision to become reality is that gifted emerging leaders with disabilities must be told that they have what it takes to lead, and then people who are, are on a similar path must travel beside them. A mentor says, you can do it. I believe in you, and then says, let's get together. Please welcome Mark Crenshaw to the Hall of Fame. Margot Jaffe is an award-winning producer, advocate, and director of accessibility marketing at Verizon Media. After living with undiagnosed ADHD for 29 years, Margot founded Kaleidoscope Society, an empowering online community for women with ADHD. The project has empowered thousands of people in over 100 countries through storytelling and expert advice. Margot went on to found the technology industry's first neurodiversity employee resource group at Yahoo Verizon Media with a mission to empower all minds in the workplace. In two years, she scaled the group to a global network of peer support for employees in over 35 offices around the world. In 2018, Margot spearheaded the Disability Collection, a landmark partnership between Verizon Media, the National Disability Leadership Alliance, and Getty Images to change the representation of disability in the media. Trained in documentary storytelling as a tool for social change, Margot publicly advocates for disability inclusion and as a role model through Verizon Media Projects and Kaleidoscope Society is showing others how to center authenticity in storytelling. On mentoring, Margot said, I am passionate about mentoring because I believe everyone has a unique gift to contribute to the world. 
I would not be where I am today without the mentors who have taken the time to listen, coach, and most importantly, believe in me. I am determined to pay it forward by continuing to dispel stigma around mental health and disability. I want the next generation to feel valued for the unique gifts and empowered to contribute their full potential in the workplace and in their communities. Please welcome Margot Jaffe to the Hall of Fame. In 1970, Ken Kunkin broke his neck and sustained a spinal cord injury. While still a patient, Ken testified before the United States Senate Subcommittee on Healthcare, chaired by Senator Edward Kennedy. In 1971, almost 20 years before the Americans with Disabilities Act, Ken returned to Cornell University and completed his undergraduate degree in industrial engineering. He estimates that he had to be pulled up or bounced down close to 100 steps just to attend his first day of classes. In 1977, Ken was hired by Abilities Inc., now the Viscardi Center, to be its college work orientation program coordinator and coordinated program which provided educationally related work experiences for disabled college students and was also a vocational counselor. He later earned his Juris Doctorate and worked as an assistant district attorney in Nassau County, Long Island, and over more than 30 years, eventually became one of the deputy bureau chiefs of the County Court Trial Bureau. During his career, Ken has embedded mentoring in all he has done and has been a role model for many. Ken retired from full-time employment, but continues to work with the district attorney's office in a part-time capacity, and also continues to serve as a board member of the Viscardi Center. Alongside John Kemp, class of 2015, Judge Robert Pippia, class of 2018, and Dr. Christopher Rosa, class of 2018. On mentoring, Ken said, mentoring involves bolstering self-confidence and inspiring and encouraging others to tackle difficult challenges and accomplish career goals. A mentor conveys the sentiment expressed by Christopher Robin to Winnie the Pooh. You're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And with the wise counsel of both Ken Kunkin and perhaps Christopher Robin, we're going to now take a pause after inducting those folks into the Hall of Fame. These are certainly stories of individuals and the work that they are doing are truly worthy of the recognition. And we look forward to learning more about the other inductees shortly. But right now, it's time to take a look backwards. And today we're going to honor two of our Disability Mentoring Hall of Famers who are no longer with us. I'd like to now introduce Mr. John Kemp, class of 2018, and the president and CEO of the Viscardi Center. John? I'm not getting any audio from John. It appears, John, right now, this is Steve from Tech Support. Um, John, you just are on listen only mode. I don't know if you have a microphone plugged in. Um, uh, might need to try to reset up your audio or call and using the call in number. Let's get John on here because I bet you he has a telephone. Um, everyone stand by. We're going to send a telephone number to John so he can call in. And uh, John has to leave us at, um, at the hour. So we want to make sure his comments happen here. You want me to go now while you're fixing, John? It's Judy. It's a possibility. Let's see if we can get him the call. Um, otherwise, we won't have the ability to have John's comments, Judy. No, but I. But it's only one thirty-two. He has to leave it too. Right. All right. Let's do it. Hang on, Judy. Okay. Yeah, of course.
Hello. John? Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Come on, Nico. Okay, I I got a phone, right? I call you later. I just use the hand held part. Of it. <laughs> Is that better? That's yeah. Just sign off the website, and we can have you via telephone. Okay, I'm gonna have to set the phone down just for a second. You probably look more handsome on the picture. <laughs> well, at least a little younger. <laughs> Okay, uh, are we good? Yes, thank you very okay. much for, for uh, working through that. And John, the uh, floor is all yours. Well, I'm very sorry there to cause a delay here. And uh, I just wanna say, once again, I just uh, am very proud of you, Derek, and thank you and Raina for what you're doing with the disability mentoring uh, program and for the all the inductees and many of whom, and I'm watching the, the public chat and I see Tons of people, and Deborah Rue, and Ken Kunkin, and Tamara Bibb Allen, and uh, just so many people that I know, and I and I know you're all a part of this. So thank you very much. And then, of course, Judy Human is on the screen, and I I see her as well. And it's great to be with you. I will be somewhat brief, and I just appreciate the opportunity to pay honor to Barbara Butts. Um, we I think we all are very saddened by the fact that Barbara passed away in November. Um, Barbara had an incredible career, and, and as I was preparing for this, I was exchanging thoughts with Derek about um, what mentorship meant. And uh, as part of another program called Encore, I came across a really interesting um, description of, of a mentor, and, and a, ment a mentor and a mentee relationship is really one of a knowledge speaks and wisdom listens, and uh, a mentee asks a mentor for the knowledge, and it's provided. And a uh, as as the mentee listens to the wisdom, hopefully there's a lot of wisdom that's flowing. And that that two-sided approach was really exactly who Barbara Butts was, and what she left us with. Um, she was an incredible figure. Uh, when she, when you think about people like Judy and a, and a number of people on this phone who have moved from the public service world to the private world uh, and continue to climb and learn how to handle all of the politics of life and politics of government uh, and how to continue to look at their responsibility, who, who they feel is their, what they feel is their responsibility to help people grow. And develop. It's not about them. It's about helping the next person up and and forward. Um, Barbara was rare and precious soul. I think we all who knew her very well considered her to be a quietly fierce warrior and a gentle goddess. And I I always loved talking to her because she always made me feel safe and strong and powerful. And everybody that I've talked to who ever knew her, including Susan Daniels always regarded her as a gentle, quiet, fierce warrior. She was always on a mission. She made things happen with a focus and a determination. She was collaborative, coordinating, and always accomplishing the task. Her career spanned the leadership roles, as I mentioned, in public and private sectors, and she was an assistant secretary. You don't you don't get to that level and to Judy's level and others in this on this call uh, in government, whether it's state or federal, by being a, a timid soul afraid to, to speak your mind. In fact, those who are really courageous and speak their minds are the ones that people gravitate to and they want to hear from. Barbara rose to the level of Assistant Secretary of the Florida Department of Labor and Employment Security. Uh, her pri previous roles included leadership of nonprofit organizations and uh, management responsibilities in consulting. In 2010, Barbara became president of PolicyWorks, 
a national nonprofit organization whose mission is to support individuals with disabilities in their efforts to achieve independence through employment. Among her achievements was to develop the widely replicated California-based college to career transition model in partnership with San Diego State University's Interwork Institute and to create a certification program for peer mentors in partnership with Florida Atlantic University for use by state boat rehab agencies nationwide. PolicyWorks is a partner in the Workforce Initiative Technical Assistance Center, providing technical assistance to 11 states and developing training products and tools for use by state VR agencies and members of the national workforce system. Under Barbara's leadership, PolicyWorks, Susan as a founder, became a founding partner of Lights, Camera, Action. And I think about Tamara uh, and, and other people who are involved here on, the, on this call. Lights, Camera, and Action, a uh, program that helps young people with disabilities connect with media careers. And Judy has written extensively about it. When I think about Barbara, I am so forever grateful that she was in my life, that I had the benefit of knowing her and listening to her and following her and partnering with her. And to all of those who are inducted into the Mentoring Hall of Fame, I think we have a lot to say and remember about Barbara. She was a knowledge speaker, and, she, and we always listened when she spoke because she spoke wisdom to us all. So thank you, and in memory of Barbara, let us all carry on and keep climbing. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, John, for remembering and honoring Barbara. She was a great supporter of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition and our work at Partners for Youth with Disabilities, and we will carry on in her honor. Everyone, my name is Janelle Thomas, and I'm the Director of National Initiatives at Partners for Youth with Disabilities, the home of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. After recognizing Barbara, we will now continue with the inductions. It is only fitting to next honor one of Barbara's close colleagues and friends and mentees who today is being honored for her own mentoring impact. Elizabeth Jennings is the Interim Acting Executive Director of National Disability Institute. Elizabeth has 22 years of experience working to improve the employment and economic outcomes of people with disabilities. Elizabeth is recognized nationally for her knowledge on financial literacy education activities and strategies that improve the economic advancement of people with disabilities and the interplay of those strategies with social security disability benefits, including applicable work incentives. Prior, Elizabeth worked for Gulfstream Goodwill Industries and was the Director of Community Impact for United Way of Palm Beach County. Elizabeth said, I have had the great privilege of having incredible mentors in my life. What they taught me and I hope to pay forward as a mentor is the importance of silence, flexibility, and humility. Listening to another person to hear not only what they are saying, but what they need in return. Guidance, a sounding board, compassion, understanding. Mentoring takes on many different forms and requires the ability to adjust to the individual. Most importantly, my mentors taught me that mentoring is a two-way street. And in providing support to another person, you learn as much, sometimes more from them as they learn for, from you. Elizabeth, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Damon Wonke is the founder, CEO, and lead accessibility consultant at Abilitrek, an idea born from a 54-hour startup challenge. As a disability-owned business enterprise, Abilitrek is assisting organizations in creating more accessible and inclusive environments. Damon also teaches a disability studies course at Western Washington University. While attending WWU, he founded their Disability Outreach Center, and today he serves on the board of directors for the Northwest Access Fund. He also enjoys the outdoors and rock climbing. His motto is empowering others to trek without boundaries. On mentoring, Damon said, 
I have been lucky to contribute many of my successes to the support of so many disability mentors through my lifetime. I have experienced the benefits of mentorship and mentor the next generation of the disability community whenever I can. We welcome Damon into the class of 2019. Dante A. Mickens is a financial consultant for the National Council on Compensation Insurance, a graduate of the Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind and Florida State University, Dante also donates his time toward a variety of organizations, including previous appointments with the Florida Rehabilitation Council for the Blind and the Florida Rehabilitation Council. Dante is currently chairman of the board of directors for the Lighthouse for the Blind of the Palm and also serves as chairman of the board of directors for the National Organization for Albinism and Hypopigmentation. Additionally, Dante has maintained his involvement in formal and informal mentorship programs. In high school, he participated in a formal peer mentoring, and during college, he worked with high school students who were also visually impaired to prepare for transition to college or employment. At his current employer, Dante took pride in mentoring new hires and those looking to apply for positions within the finance division. Dante is also a Paralympic medalist and former member of the men's U.S. national goalball team competing in Athens and Beijing. Dante on mentoring. Mentorships, whether formal or informal, are mutually beneficial to both the mentor and mentee. I view mentors as guides that help others traverse the many trials and opportunities that may lie ahead based on their individual goals. We all would struggle a little less during life if we had access to and learn from a mentor. Dante, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Paul Lewis. As a graduate of the University of Massachusetts Lowell, Paul has been a serial entrepreneur since the age of 11 when he opened a store in his parents' garage and sold candy to the neighborhood kids. In 1993, he co-founded a small chain of gourmet coffee houses. Today, he is the second generation owner of Chemco, a manufacturer of cleaning products to the fast food industry. Paul is also a mentor at Partners for Youth with the Disabilities for a man named TK. Paul said, mentoring means I make a personal difference in someone else's life. It means I get to advise, coach, recommend, share ideas, listen, and sometimes just sit there and be there for my mentee. But it's not just about working with a mentee. It's about having another friend in my life. Spending time with TK is truly a pleasure. I enjoy his company and the things we do. TK is fun and his boundless energy and optimism is infectious. My life is richer for having him in it. Susan Mazrui. Susan is the Director of Global Policy at AT&T Services, Inc. She began work in communications in 1994 at Pacific Bell in disability marketing. In 1998, she moved to the wireless field where Singular Wireless became the first national carrier to offer talking cell phones and establish a task force on disability. She worked closely with TDI and the Hearing Loss Association of America and other industry members to address hearing aid and TTY compatibility with digital wireless headsets. At AT&T, Masrui was instrumental in establishing the Corporate Accessibility Technolo Technology Office, which has assessed over 500 50,000 AT&T products and services. She was the architect of AT&T's accessibility and inclusion program with cross company teams addressing the needs of deaf and disabled employees and their family members. She has served several terms on federal advisory committees, is on the boards of the US International Council on Disability, the World Institute on Disability and G3ICT. On mentoring, Susan said, resilience in the face of adversity is critical. This is especially true for those who are most marginalized in our society. 
Mentors offer, often offer critical insights on developing skill sets, identifying resources, and creating support networks that can increase long-term resilience. Welcome, Susan, to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Amy Mangold. As Vice President of Human Resources for Culture, she oversees all human resources initiatives to include talent management, benefits, compensation, payroll, employee relations, learning and development. Amy currently serves as the President for the Human Resources Association of Palm Beach County, where she's held positions of President-Elect, Director, and Workforce Readiness Chair. Amy has championed competitive, integrated employee employment in Palm Beach County and has aided the program's success through mentorship. Amy on mentoring. As an HR professional, I receive the most satisfaction in knowing I may have played a small role in the success of others and the achievement of their goals, providing opportunities to individuals with disabilities and seeing their contributions in the workplace is very rewarding. To me, mentoring is the sharing of one's best self to inspire the best in others. Please welcome Amy Mangold to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Josie Thomas. As the architect of CBS's Diversity and Inclusion Enterprise, Josie Thomas oversees the company's commitment to diversity across all of its businesses. She leads multi-dimensional diversity and inclusion strategies, working with senior executives throughout the corporation to develop ta talent, diverse suppliers, outreach, advocacy group engagement, and national industry impact. She created the CBS Diversity Institute and launched highly regarded programs that provide participants with opportunities in front of and behind the camera. In addition, she is the executive sponsor of CBS's employee business resource groups while spearheading the CBS Corporation Diversity and Inclusion Council. For over a decade, Josie has also led disability inclusive programs and initiatives to encourage multiply marginalized and historically excluded youth with disabilities, like the CBS News LCA internship for journalism students with disabilities. On mentoring, mentoring provides me the unique privilege of sharing my hindsight so that it can be become the mentee's foresight. It is a learning experience for the mentor, mentor as well, providing opportunities to truly listen and gain wisdom from the lived experiences of those at often challenge points in their career cycle. Then take those challenges and provide guidance to overcome and achieve success. Maggie Rafi. Maggie entered the disability community in 1971 when a close friend sustained a spinal cord injury. Searching for resources during a time when the medical and social service community had few expectations that someone paralyzed from the shoulders down could return to the community and employment, led Maggie to the Spinal Cord Injury Network of Metropolitan Washington, where she served as its board secretary. The friendships formed with the members who were wheelchair users and their families provided the knowledge that expectations with, for individuals with disabilities should have no limits. After receiving her master's in rehabilitation counseling, she worked for the University of Maryland College Park on the development of accessibility plans, then trauma counselor at Suburban Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, followed by Montgomery County's Disability Resource Division. In 1992, she joined the federal workforce with the President's Committee on, Empe on Employment with, of People with Disabilities, followed by working at the Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy, where she was a senior business development specialist in their Division of Education and Outreach. Maggie retired in 2010 and within three months failed retirement and joined John Kemp and Jill Houghton at Disability Inn as a senior corporate relations consultant. Her final retirement was in August 2019. 
Maggie also engaged in countless community activities, including currently serving on the board for Transcend Inc., a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving education and employment success of youth and young adults with disabilities. To summarize Maggie and her mentoring impact, this is from Jill Houghton, President and CEO of Disability Inn. From the moment I met Maggie Rafi, she took me under her wings and has nurtured me and my development every step of the way on my career journey. Additionally, I have witnessed her mentor countless individuals with disabilities daily for years. She lives her life as a constant source of guidance for all that she comes into contact with and is always working to build people, skills, knowledge, and confidence. Please welcome Maggie Rafi into the Hall of Fame. Eric Weinmeier. Eric is one of the most celebrated and accomplished athletes in the world. In 2001, he became the only blind person in history to climb Mount Everest. When he stood on the top of Karsten's Pyramid in 2008, he completed his quest to climb all of the seven, seven summits, the tallest peak on each of the seven continents. Eric and blind Navy veteran Lonnie Bedwell kayaked the entire 277 miles of the Grand Canyon on the Colorado River, considered one of the most formidable whitewater venues in the world. Eric is an author, and his latest book, No Barriers, A Blind Man's Journey to Kayak the Grand Canyon, is more than an adventure story. It illuminates how we move forward in our lives towards growth and purpose, despite the barriers that get in our way. Eric continually seeks out new adventures, fo focusing his efforts on empowering people traditionally swept to the sidelines of life. He founded an organization called No Barriers, which, which helps people with challenges tap into human spirit, break through barriers, and contribute to the world. Eric, thoughts on mentoring? The best part of climbing these mountains is coming down and using the ex experiences to elevate the world. For me, that has been mentoring young people facing all types of challenges, from blind and deaf to kids in foster care and those who have lost parents to war. No matter the challenge, we all face barriers, but when we rope up with great people, we can do better than transform our own lives. We can transform the world. Please welcome Eric to the class of 2019. Hayden Mears. Hayden co-founded and co-ran Asperger Experts, an informational media publishing company dedicated to enlivening, empowering, and educating people on the autism spectrum. Drawing from his experience with Asperger's, he taught families the power of self-acceptance and worked from the belief that we all have a place and an importance in this world. Hayden is now an internationally published entertainment writer with work featured in Starburst Magazine, Screen Rant, Pop Matters, and nearly a dozen other publications. His thoughts on mentoring. Mentoring kids on the spectrum is the most fulfilling job I will ever have. I learned and grew along, along every person I taught, and I'd like to think I'm better now because of that. Please welcome Hayden to the Hall of Fame. Maysoon Zaid. Maysoon is an actress, comedian, writer, and disability advocate. She is a graduate of and a guest comedian in residence at Arizona State University. She is the co-founder, co-executive producer of the New York Arab American Comedy Festival and the Muslim Funny Fest. She was a full-time on-air contributor to Countdown with Keith Olbermann and a columnist for the Daily Beast. She has most recently appeared on Oprah Winfrey Networks in Deep Shift, 60 Seconds, and ABC News. May soon had the most viewed TED Talk of 2014 and was named one of 100 women of 2015 by the BBC. 
As a professional comedian, Maysoon has performed in top New York clubs and has toured extensively at home and abroad. She was the headliner on the Arabs Gone Wild comedy tour and the Muslims Are Coming tour. Maysoon appeared alongside Adam Sandler in You Don't Mess with the Zohan and has written for Vice. She limped in the New York Fashion Week, is a recurring character on General Hospital, and the author of Audible's Find Another Dream. Her statement on the importance of mentoring. Having a great mentor is like having your own personal Yoda. They'll share their wisdom so you can avoid the mistakes they made. My fairy god mentor, Laureen Arbus, has been one of the greatest influences on my life. Good luck finding yours. Now we will take a second uh, to have our second pause from the citations and inductions and remember another Hall of Famer who passed away this year. It is my honor to introduce international disability rights activist, host of the Human Perspective, author of Being Human, which is coming out in February, and member of the class of 2015, Judy Human. Judy, take it away. Thank you very much. And like everyone is expressing, this is really an honor for me today to participate in th this event. I really want to thank um, Derek and um, Raina and Jean, and obviously Susan for her vision because she even planned uh, this organization and every detail of what she wanted to carry forth from her life. And I think it's a great tribute to Susan um, because of her vision. I wanna say that, I think it was John that mentioned earlier that, you know, and Catherine Campisi in her comment, that many of us really didn't have mentors. Um, I'm 72 years old. And so basically, you know, as I was growing up and recognizing that I was not like other people, as far as my disability was concerned, it became clear to me as I was getting older that I wanted to be able to know other people like myself, to be able to ask questions, get support, give support. And the film that's gonna be coming out um, by Netflix and the higher production, Obama Company uh, will be out on Netflix in March. It's called Crip Camp. And I really encourage all of you to look for it. It'll be showing at Sundance uh, next week. But it's a great example of the emergence of disabled people at a young age uh, who are supporting each other, who later went on to become leaders in our movement. It was a privilege of mine to get to know Marka Bristow in the 1970s when she first acquired her disability. Um, Marka and I, I would say, were mentors for each other. Uh, she first had her disability and she was, you know, moving from being a non-disabled person to being a disabled individual. But as she um, evolved over the course of her life and began to immediately assume positions of leadership within the disability community, she was not just a leader, but she also was a feminist. And her view as a woman uh, with a disability and also her real vision for the critical need for diversity by race and gender and, and disability is something that she will definitely be remembered for. I had the privilege of interviewing Marka for a number of hours um, a few weeks before she passed away and uh, under the support of the Ford Foundation. And the video that we're gonna show you now um, is I thought would be very valuable to show today because it's her own words. So um, let's look at this and then I'll make a few more comments. Martha Bristow, um, co-founder and president of- Martha Bristow. 
to go down the path where I was willfully either false or I could be in the process of reclaiming. So I think you can see why I felt it was so important to show uh, Martha's video. Let me just also add something that she did not um, have in this portion of the video, um, but does discuss in another part. Martha had multiple disabilities. 
uh, one of which was alcoholism. And she was very, very involved in AA. And you could see that um, over the course of the last 20 years of her life. She had depression and a number of other disabilities. And I think the reason why she called those out was because in looking at herself as a role model, as a mentor, um, it was important for people to see the true person. So when looking at the roles that the new uh, uh, people who've been inducted, inducted, excuse me, into the Hall of Fame, and those of us who are already in the Hall of Fame, um, I think our responsibility is to dig deep. Um, it's really not to be in a peripheral way. And it really is to facilitate an ability of people that we're working with to really um, trust us, for us to trust them. It's a mutual relationship. I love mentoring because I learn as much as I give. Uh, Marka's life will live on, uh, just like Susan's and others, because of the fantastic work they did. There's a new director now for Access Living who was named yesterday. Her name is Karen Tamley. She used to work at Access Living 14 years as the commissioner for a disability in Chicago. And she will be a great person to move Access Living forward with Marcus legacy. Thank you. Judy, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing these important and valuable and heartfelt um, remembrances and comments and really some recommendations on how to harness um, the messages uh, and importantly, bring this video to all of us as well. So now we have to return to the work. And I think that's what Barbara and Marco would want us to do. And certainly Susan is looking at us saying, why aren't we at work? We're talking too much. Um, and with that, I'm gonna move us forward to our next citation. Four Wheel City is an entertainment organization started by Namel Tapwaters Norris and Ricardo Rickfire Velasquez. Two talented hip hop artists and motivational speakers in wheelchairs due to gun violence. Their mission, their mission is to use hip hop music and culture to create more opportunities for the disabled and inspire people not to give up in life. In addition, they show the world that people with disabilities have talents, dreams, and deserve to be treated equally. Four Wheel City performs original music as well as motivational speeches at hospitals, schools, rehabilitation centers, fundraisers, and events all over the world. Now, on mentoring, we thought we would show you Rick Fire and Tap Waters because their logo didn't bring up their image. That's Tap Waters on the right. And uh, just a point of note, Tap Waters informed me that his middle name is actually Derek. So sorry, Rick Fire, but I kind of like Tap Waters a little more. Um, and what we wanted to do with, for their comment on mentoring is uh, Four Wheel City um, is an art, uh, as a, a rappers and artists, um, have a lot of songs and on their profile page um, on the disabilitymentors.website, you can access their YouTube video for this song, Welcome to Reality. Uh, so on mentoring, you could end up rich. All you got to do is stay in school, set goals, stay focused and follow through. Look at me, I'm living proof. I've been through it, seen it, wished for it, dreamed it, worked hard for it and achieved it. Please believe it. I use to could walk, but now I'm a paraplegic, but I'm here for you to see it. And it goes on at the end to say, the choice you make today is going to affect your life tomorrow. Please welcome Four Wheel City to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Dylan M. Rafati proudly identifies as having multiple disabilities, is an activist, advocate, public speaker, social entrepreneur, and nonprofit professional. He currently serves as the Director of Business Development and Partnerships for See Here Inc. and is the leader of Dylan Listed. He also currently serves on many volunteer boards, including as Vice Chair of the Texas Governor's Committee on People with Disabilities. Dylan provides mentorship and support to entrepreneurs with disabilities, families, disabled veterans, the homeless, nonprofit executives, businesses, colleges, and government agencies. He also plans to continue mentoring youth and adults with disabilities to reach for meaningful opportunities. 
On mentoring, Dylan said, I firmly believe that mentoring consists of a strong and working relationship between people that delivers a sense of direction, guidance, motivational support, and hold each of us accountable. Mentorship is often provided by advocates and leaders of our community who help navigate us to reach for successful outcomes. Please welcome Dylan Rafati to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Barbara Kornblau is an attorney, occupational therapist, certified case manager, radical e-patient, and a person with a disability. She is a professor of occupational therapy at Florida A&M University and collaborates with the American Association on Health and Disabilities on Mammography Accessibility Projects, the United Spinal Association's Pathways to Employment Program, and the National Fibromyalgia and Chronic Pain Association. Barbara also founded the Coalition for Disability Health Equity and was a past president of the American Occupational Therapy Association. As an attorney, she has litigated cases under the ADA involving discrimination in employment, state and local government services, and healthcare services. From Barbara's nominator, Barbara's commitment to mentoring to support the personal and professional success of mentees with disabilities like me makes her very well qualified candidate for the Hall of Fame. She personifies Susan Daniels' dedication to mentoring people with disabilities to foster participation, independent living, and professional achievement. I am proud to know Barbara as my longtime mentor, friend, and colleague, Scott Robertson. Please welcome Barbara into the Hall of Fame. Catherine Perez hails from Los Angeles and is the proud granddaughter of Mexican immigrants. She identifies as a queer disabled Latina and was the first in her family to graduate from college. She was the co-founder of the National Coalition of, for Latinxes with Disabilities, where she brought together disabled Latinxes from across the country and led initiatives in policy, research, community building, and activism. Catherine is currently the inaugural executive director of the Coelho Center for Disability Law, Policy, and Innovation. In 2019, she created the Coelho Center Law Fellowship Program, which is the first program of its kind to specifically train and mentor disabled individuals interested in attending law school. Catherine believes in creating a strong pipeline of law students with disabilities to go on and serve as attorneys, judges, and politicians. She also teaches critical disability law at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. On mentoring, Catherine said, as a professor and director of a disability center, I feel like I've come full circle since those days when I was a student and budding activist. Even if it may be that I have more experience or knowledge on a subject, I always consider those I am mentoring my equals and my future colleagues. Pretty often I come across people who I know will, be, will by far surpass any impact I've had, and I'm just honored that I got to play a small role in their development. Catherine, welcome to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Dr. John Ross Rizzo is a physician scientist at NYU Langone Health, serving as the Interim Director of Innovation and Technology and Research for the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. He leads the Visio Motor Integration Laboratory, where his team focuses on eye-hand coordination as it relates to acquired brain injury, and the Reactive Lab, where his team focuses on advanced wearables for the sensory deprived and benefits from his own personal experiences with vision loss. He is also founder and chief medical advisor of Tactile Navigation Tools, where he and his team work incessantly to disrupt the assistive technology space for those with visual impairments of all kinds. From one of his three nominations that we received, From one of the three nominations we received, Dr. Rizzo is always willing to share his experience and knowledge to find career-related information and exposure to various professional resources, opportunities, and networks. He has provided both emotional and moral support and encouragement through career-related counseling and coaching. It is with great pleasure that I enthusiastically offer my highest recommendation, and I am confident that I will continue to be a distinguished and exceptional mentor, scientist, and physician. Please welcome J.R. Rizzo to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Paul Wyland is a health and physical education teacher with an adaptive physical education certification by Triad. 
but he is a coach and an athlete at heart. Paul leads the Oak Hill Adaptive Sports Program and has coached wheelchair basketball at the high school and college level and was part of the USA Paralympics Wheelchair Basketball Selection Committee in 2008. Paul has extensive experience in developing, organizing, managing, and coaching a multitude of adaptive sports programs and is passionate about helping individuals of all abilities realize their full potential, both on the playing field and in life. Recently, one of Oak Hill's members said, Coach Paul was the first person I've known that made me think of myself as an athlete. I am an amputee, and this was not the way I thought of myself. He changed the way of thinking, and now I'm involved in many activities that I would have never tried. Coach Paul gives everything that he is part of 100%, and he's always busy helping others. Please welcome Coach Paul to the Hall of Fame. Dr. Suzanne Stoll serves as an assistant professor at the University of San Diego. A former high school English teacher, administrator, and leader of disability programs, she has expertise in online instruction, curriculum design, mentoring, school culture, universal design for learning, and disability studies. She has presented her research related to conceptions of disability and disability pedagogy, often including reflection about her experience as a disabled student at both national and international conferences. She has created disability curriculum for high school students, for out-of-school time programs, and for disability mentoring. She advises a student organization, Alliance of Disability Advocates, and also serves on the board for Society for Disability Studies. Suzanne is especially passionate about working with pre-service and in-service teachers to rethink their conceptions of disability and create inclusive school communities. Annually, she leads a fellowship program for general ed teachers who want to become leaders of inclusion at their schools. On mentoring, Suzanne said, mentoring is a responsibility, a solid way to build community and a means to continue learning. It is a way to show gratitude to those who have supported my journey and a way to practice and model interdependence. We welcome Suzanne to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Joe Strache. Joe is a co-producer on Apple TV's show, C, and is a blindness consultant for disability organizations in the entertainment world. He mentors youth and young adults with disabilities in the United States and Canada. On mentoring, Joe said, mentoring changed my life as a person with disabilities, and I believe it is a responsibility to bring it to others. Joe, thanks for all you do for others, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Lydia XZ Brown is a disability justice advocate, organizer, educator, attorney, strategist, and writer whose work is largely focused on violence against multiply marginalized disabled people, especially institutionalization, incarceration, and policing. They have worked to advance transformative change through organizing in the streets, writing legislation, conducting anti-ableism workshops, testifying at regulatory and policy hearings, disrupting institutional complacency everywhere from the academy to state agencies and the nonprofit industrial complex. Lydia co-leads the project on disability rights and algorithmic fairness at the Institute for Technology, Law and Policy at Georgetown University Law Center, teaches for Georgetown University's Disability Studies Program, and supports the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network's public policy advocacy. Additionally, Lydia founded and directs the Fund for Community Reparations for Autistic People of Color's Interdependence, Survival, and Empowerment, which provides direct support, mutual aid, and community reparations to individual autistic people of color. In collaboration with E. Ashkenazi and Morena Jiwa Anoa, Lydia is also co-editor and visionary behind all the Weight of Our Dreams, the first ever anthology of writings and artwork by autistic people of color and otherwise negatively racialized autistic people. Lydia is also an appointed member of the American Bar Association's Commission on Disability Rights and chairperson of the ABA's Section on Civil Rights and Social Justice's Disability Rights and Elder Affairs Committee. Lydia is founding board member of the Alliance for Citizens Citizen directed supports and a member, founder, and contributor to several other social, social justice councils, projects, and initiatives. Lydia on mentoring said, 
True mentorship is collaborative, where both mentors and mentees are always teaching each other and learning from each other. For disabled people, especially those of us at the margins of the margins, mentorship is how we learn to survive in a profoundly ableist world, from those who have come before us, and also how we learn that it might be possible for us to experience joy, care, love, and manifest our own genius. Not in spite of disability, but very much in spite of ableism. Please welcome Lydia Brown to the Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Maria R. Palacios is a poet, author, spoken word performer, motivational speaker, social change agent, disability rights activist, mentor, and workshop facilitator, whose work has appeared on numerous multimedia publications, conferences, and live events. Maria's work centers around illustrating the power and beauty of disabled people without negating the truth surrounding the ableism and oppression faced by the disabled community. She made significant change through her work at the Houston Area Women's Center, the Literacy Advance of Houston, and the Houston Center for Independent Living. As one of the 1990 Capitol Crawlers who helped pass the ADA, her advocacy and love for people with disabilities led Maria to mentoring young women with disabilities through a program she developed called Peer Empowerment Project. Maria is also the founder and president of the National Women with Disabilities Empowerment Forum. And today, Maria is the committee chair and program director for Houston's Disability Unit and Pride Celebration, and also serves on various boards and advisory groups. A particular passion to Maria's Sins Invalid, a performance project of artists with disabilities. It is now my distinct honor to introduce to you a polio survivor, queer, brown, immigrant, Latina, mother, grandmother, healing force, teacher, lecturer, artist, activist, role model, and more. In the artistic world, Maria Palacios is known as the goddess on wheels, and now she is also known as a member of the class of the 2019 of the Susan Daniels Disability Mentoring Hall of Fame. Maria, thank you for your work and for being with us today. We look forward to your remarks and your reading. Thank you so much. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. I am honored to share this recognition with my fellow inductees. Many of you I know in person, uh, many of you have touched my life from afar. All of you, thank you for existing. It is with immense gratitude that I join you for the celebration through which we honor and recognize the transformative power of mentoring. It is from our ability to find strength, power, and beauty in one another as disabled people that things like empowerment and self-love become permanent in our day-to-day -day lives. As disabled people, the power of learning from each other is life-saving. We mentor one another as we navigate society's ableist ways. We help each other as we learn or we learn to love the body we're in because we realize that it's the only one we will ever have. We learn to see value and worth in our disabled lives without having to attach non-disabled dreams to them in order to validate our humanity. My life as an advocate, my life as an artist, my life as an empowered disabled woman was shaped, sustained, and nurtured by the mentors in my life. Disabled women in my own community from whom I learned that loving ourselves in a world that expects us to hate being who we are is the most revolutionary act of advocacy and liberation we can ever exercise as disabled people. Never doubt that self-love automatically fights ableism. When we love ourselves, our humanity becomes evident, even to those who may want to deny it. I wish I would have had the opportunity to meet Susan in this lifetime. I learned that she was a fellow polio warrior, activist, and poet whose life seems to have been so deliciously rich and beautiful. I can so much relate to her passion. I can feel the spirit of her mentorship still pulsating in the life she touched. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for so generously giving yourself to the world. Your legacy of mentoring power shall live on. Before I read the poem I wrote for today's celebration, I want to thank my dear friend Angie Square, who I found nominated me. And I kind of laugh about it because I, Angie is one of my dearest friends, and that this totally came as a surprise. Angie, you are my artistic soulmate, crypt sister power, and more. I love you. 
And um, now I'm going to read to you uh, this poem, which I wrote especially for today with a lot of love to all of you, uh, my fellow inductees and the and organizers of today's event, but more than anything to the younger generation because our ability to change and influence people with disabilities must begin with our influence on the younger generation. So this is called Crip Words of Advice to the Younger Generation. Oh, my beautiful young disabled people, my precious ones, I come to you with hands full of life experience and a heart full of love, love for you, my darling cripplings, whose disabled lives are just beginning and whose unique beauty is just sprouting into the force you can become. Never doubt your personal magnificence, even when the world may fail to see it as such. Instead, they will rely too much on ableist measures of success. They will lead you to believe you're less because you're disabled. They will want you to think that being disabled is bad, that disability is a dirty word. They will want to hide you from the world. Please know that you deserve to be here, even though nobody's telling you that yet. Don't believe what the non-disabled world says. Don't believe what it says about your body, about your differences, about your non-normative mind and your revolutionary being. Don't listen to what they say because to them, being disabled equals being broken or a token of inspiration to those who are afraid of us. Don't believe what they say. Lean against the murals of our disability rights history and listen to the heartbeat of the advocacy that led us to this moment we share right now. Please believe the disabled elders who have been there. Honor the disabled people who came before you, the ones who survived decades of ableist oppression, the ones whose scars can teach you that scars are the beauty marks of our survival. Lean on the force of our experience, knowing that as disabled people, fighting for equality will always mean having to go beneath the roots of all other movements because every movement will leave us behind. For let's not forget, that while Rosa Parks was asked to move to the back of the bus, disabled people were not even allowed on the bus. We've been denied a seat at the table, at every seat, a seat at every table, and we're still fighting to be able to find ourselves reflected in the success stories of people like us and to see beauty in bodies like ours. The non-disabled world will assume that you can't. The non-disabled world will assume that you won't but you will learn that you can, and you will learn that you will get there in your own terms, at your own pace. You will reach the mountaintop of your own advocacy and share your own legacy of life-changing truths. Assume that you can. Assume that you will. Assume that you must be driven by your own passions and the power of your voice, the power of your vote, your untold stories of survival. You, my precious cripplings, you are the ones who will change the world for other disabled people even after the elders are gone, after the seasons change like they always change. Don't be afraid to share your truth and leave your mark. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Thank you. So that was absolutely tremendous and maria i know you were reading your poem but the comments that were coming in during the poem reading are emphasizing everyone's appreciation for the the words the message your passion beautiful goosebumps somebody said crippling is now their favorite word um, for those of you that don't know maria uh, i've only met her because of the hall of fame um, and I, I urge you to connect. Uh, you can follow her on Twitter at, at Goddess on Wheels. Um, very inspirational, very moving. And yes, let's find ways to share this poem throughout the year. And um, Maria, I think you have a new fan club. So thank you very much for that. Um, at this point, I'll ask Janelle Thomas to uh, cover a few words about NDMC and we'll wrap up. Wow. Well, I'm not sure how I follow Maria. That was incredible. But I do want to take a moment to thank everybody for uh, today um, and to share a little bit about the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. Uh, 
our goal is to raise awareness about the importance and impact of mentoring in the lives of people with disabilities and to increase the number and quality of disability mentoring programs around the country. We do many activities, awareness, connections, resources, inclusion, and recognition, which you're seeing today through the Hall of Fame. And I want to encourage you, if you are moved by today, if you believe in the power of mentoring, especially inclusive mentoring, and you haven't uh, been involved, you can easily go to our website. Uh, in the center of the website, there is a button that says subscribe to our newsletter. Hit that and you'll get uh, monthly newsletters from us. And you can also join and become a member, which allows for even a deeper level of involvement. So join us today, help us uh, keep this feeling that we have going all year round and um, make sure that mentoring for people with disabilities as front and center on the nation's consciousness. Thank you. Janelle, thank you for all you do on, um, from Partners for Youth with Disabilities in hosting the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. Uh, we would like to thank the class of 2019 inductees for the work that they are doing in communities around the country to make the difference in the lives of youth, young adults, and adults with disabilities. But really in the lives of communities and all people. Uh, in closing today, the National Disability Mentoring Coalition uh, would like to um, also thank our members who do actively support our work. Um, and importantly, we'd like to reflect back to Susan. Uh, Susan Daniels was a force of nature in bringing communities together to challenge the status quo, remove barriers, and drive possibilities forward. People who were once operating in silos would find themselves collaborating for change, and sometimes even doing so over dinner and laughter. Susan would absolutely love the class of 2019 inductees. These are her people. These are not parlor gener generals. These are people who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward. Congratulations to the class of 2019, and thank you all for attending today's ceremony.